Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordian Glory video. Today guys I wanted to do a fun little after action report video because I was able to take the new Imperial Guard Codex into a game versus Imperial Knights played by none other than Orspex Tactics himself. Now today's video is of course going to be part tactical after action report analysis video where we discuss how the new guard played into the Imperial Knights but it's also going to be a big part just a casual chat what it was like to get to play Auspect Tactics for a few games. Now I know some people are going to be asking Mordian and Glory why didn't you do a full blown battle report with Mr Tactics? Well the thing is that me and him we both create such a huge amount of content that sometimes it's nice to just play a game without having to have a camera behind it and so we really just wanted to have a game as mates and then you know I said oh I'll take a couple of pictures and I might turn it into some sort of after action report and so that's really the format that we went with rather than to try to make something overly formal or dressed up just have a nice casual game hang out as mates you know have some pizza and a few drinks and that kind of good stuff but that's enough of an introduction let's crack on and dive into today's video now the first thing i want to say of course is a massive thank you to all spec tactics for coming down to the morning glory battle bunker for the game really appreciate you making the trip dude and of course a massive thank you for bringing your beautifully painted knight army i'm sure you'll all agree that the color scheme on these bad boys is really really impressive it's very difficult to pull off a big white color scheme especially on large models such as knights because white is one of those colors that really can look very streaky if you're not careful but it looks so mwah, crisp on these knights. I also love all of the freehand, the fact that the different knights have got all different names and everything, and the different symbols, and all that kind of cool stuff, so uh, I'm sure you all agree with me that it's a really, really well done knight army, a really beautiful colour scheme. Funny little side story, guys, this is actually not the first time that me and Orspex have played against each other. In fact, this will be the third game, but the first time that we, uh, we played against each other was actually at a tournament where we got paired up randomly against each other, and he was using his knights, and I was using my guard, very similar sort of game to to what we'll be talking about later on in today's video uh, and I just remember it was it always makes me chuckle this story because um, I remember saying oh hey man how's it going and he was like oh you're uh, you're more than glory aren't you and I was like I was like yeah you know I am yeah and um, do you like the stuff he's like yeah I followed you for years all this kind of stuff I was like oh that's, that's great uh, and then I, and he was like oh yeah I've got a I've got a small YouTube channel and I was like oh do you man that, that's uh, that's really cool and then it started it started tw twigging with me like hang on this looks like all spec tactics color scheme uh, and this guy sounds a bit like all the tactics and he was like yeah i've got a little youtube channel and i was like oh yeah just a, a little one man and he was like yeah all spec tactics and i was like man that's not a little youtube channel oh man but yeah i always that, that always fucking cracks me up like he was like yeah just, just, just got a little side project a little side all spec tactics you know 200,000 subs <laughs> But yeah, anyway, I always find that story uh, funny, guys, but yeah. Now, like I said, this is actually the third game that Orspex and I have played against you. That first one, when it was guard versus knight, and in that tournament, I actually was able to win. And then we actually, you know, became friends and everything, and we, you know, started messaging. We said, oh, you know, let's meet up for just a more casual game. And this was uh, probably about six months ago, maybe like four months ago, and we played his Blood Angels versus my Steel Legion full-blown mech army. And he actually beat me quite handily in that in that second game. So we were one for one on the old uh, on the old win loss ratio. Uh, and so the going into this game was kind of cool because like, oh, who's gonna take the lead again in the games? Um, and so we did a little bit of a rematch, obviously with the guy, you know, the the uh, the the new knights versus the new uh, the new guard book. Now, moving on to the game that we're going to be talking about today, we actually played the Scouring, which is where there are five objectives and both players deploy on the short table edger. If you're an old school player, it's the hammer and anvil style deployment. Uh, and then the mission itself is hold one objective for four points, hold two objectives for eight points, and then hold more objectives than your opponent for an additional four points. The tertiary part of the mission, you know, that second part of the primary, uh, that is where if you uh, do a scan on an objective, you gain an additional three victory points. So it's actually a relatively straightforward mission and it kind of favoured both sides because, you know, both of us had quite a lot of shooting. Uh, talking about Auspex's list for a second, he had four of the baby knights, uh, two of them with the double auto cannon, 
two of them with the melter lances and the chainsaws. And then he had three medium-sized knights. Uh, one of those had a battle cannon and a chainsaw, and the other two, I believe, had the uh, battle cannon and the gatling guns. I may have got that list slightly wrong, guys. It may have been that there were two of the battle cannon chainsaw ones and one of the double gun ones, but there were three medium knights, and they were packing a lot of firepower between them. Now, some of the eagle-eyed amongst you might have taken a look at Auspex's knights and gone, hang on, one of those looks like a big knight, like a castellan style chassis. Are you sure he wasn't running a big knight, Mordian Glory? It actually is the model of a big knight, but in terms of the weapon loadouts and everything, it is actually run as a medium knight, medium sized knight. I have to say, it's a really, really cool conversion. When I saw that model, I thought, hang on, that looks really cool. And it actually made me think that I prefer the big knight with its sort of its just general shape and overall feel and I do to the medium now I just like those uh the sort of smaller shoulder pads and I just like the way that the guns hang off it a bit better I definitely would say this is the one that we're talking about now coming up here on the left I definitely say that I think I prefer the 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 big knight look but I obviously find that you know the medium knights are a little bit more viable than the big knights at the moment but yeah I really really just like that conversion so I wanted to point it out in today's video now the funny thing about this list is actually when I was chatting to all specs pre-game and we we're just chatting about setting the game up and exchanging pleasantries and having a bit of a natter um he said this actually was his tournament list at the moment not just his tournament night list his go-to tournament list and he'd run it at a number of one day sort of RTT style events in his local area Area, and it was currently undefeated over the course of three tournaments and I think in the last one that he went to he either won it or he came second either way a very impressive performance so this was actually a strong list that uh, all specs was running uh, and I think that he's had some great success with it as well now the list I was running was my starter army for the new guard codex now that's not to say this was a beginner list or a newbie list in any way shape or form I've actually done a video on this list and I'll link it at the end of uh, this this episode but this is my guard list that is a quintessential hybrid guard army for any imperial guard player or new player to pick up and try out it's got a number of lemurs it's got four lemur russes in there it's got a couple of chimeras with kazakh in it and it's got a nice solid core of about 60 to 80 infantry so that was the list that i was running and like i said i'll link the video that i've done on this list at the end of today's episode now one last thing to mention before we get into the game is the secondaries that both sides took so uh, all specs took yield no ground bring it down and honor the house and I took bring it down inflexible command and boots on the ground but that's all the pre-mission stuff now let's take a look at what actually happened in the game so in terms of deployment I actually deployed nearly my entire army hidden out of line of sight that did mean that I had to deploy a little bit further back than the edge of my deployment zone but I was able to to get basically all of my tanks and my chimeras fairly well protected. A little bit of my infantry was exposed here and there, you know, a squad member poking around the corner of a building. But by and large, I actually had the majority of my army uh, fairly well protected behind the line of sight blocking terrain. Uh, all specs, of course, being knights, didn't really have that luxury. He did hide his baby knights behind line of sight blocking terrain, and he had some of his other uh, big knights deployed a little bit further back as well, uh, so that maybe some of my things like heavy bolters wouldn't be in range. But one of his knights was deployed on the line. Uh, that was the knight that had the um, that had the chain sword and was one that was going to be sort of aggressively pushing forward. One of the two that had the chain sword, I should say. Uh, and so uh, the reason for that was, of course, that if he got first turn, he wanted to be able to yeet a knight into my lines early on. I think he said one of his knights could, you know, if I deployed on the line, could reliably get a turn one charge. So that's why I deployed a little bit further back to protect myself from the firepower and also of course uh, from those turn one charges so after we had deployed it was time to work out who was going to get the first turn and we rolled off and i got the first turn glory to his imperial guard now the thing is is this was quite a bit of a setback for the knights i mean they really don't want to just sit there and just take a punishing turn of guard shooting before they've even had a chance to move so i think that really did put them on the back foot from the beginning of the game now my uh phase was actually relatively quick i moved a couple of units onto objectives i did some scanning i basically played it relatively conservatively because i knew that i would have the firepower to potentially pick off his knights at leisure and if i move out and expose myself too much 
then simply I'm just letting him get free shots at me. So uh, I essentially kept most of my firepower hidden behind the line of sight blocking terrain where I could see him, but he couldn't see me. Praise be to the 9th edition terrain rules. However, my gatekeeper Liam Rush genuinely couldn't see Auspex's big knight that he'd put on the front line. So I did have to move that one out and unfortunately it was exposed. Now in my first turn, I opened up with the Vanksha cannon and I got that hit. I got that wound and I got pretty lucky on my D3 plus 6 damage and on my D3 mortal wounds and just did a straight 12 wounds straight through onto that first knight, almost chopping it in half, which is pretty bonkers, but it really did just highlight how awesome it is to have that uh, Vanksha cannon just with those elite shock troops, just being able to re-roll uh, that roll to hit makes such a huge, huge difference. After the Vanquisher had got things started, it was time for the execution of plasma tanks to warm up what they had and try and finish that night off. Now, they actually almost failed to do it. Um, and what I really noticed was that whilst everyone's going on and on about the execution, how on paper it seems like such a good vehicle, the moment your opponent has a 4 plus and vulnerable save, it really can go either way on if they just manage to tank all the damage. So it took two executioners do the same amount of damage as a single Vanquisher tank. Uh, and that's just because sometimes your opponent gets lucky on his saves. But after the dust had settled, the big knight had gone down and I had also managed to do a lot of wounds to one of the mini knights as well. And that was essentially my first turn. Got onto a couple of objectives, done an action or so uh, and been able to kill one big knight and cripple one of the small ones. Now, in response to this display of firepower, Auspex went quite aggressive with knights, moving them forward, trying to make some plays happen and trying to bring as much of his firepower to bear as possible. And he actually did pretty good. Uh, he was able to kill the exposed gatekeeper uh, battle tank uh, relatively easily. And then he was also able to kill about 20, uh, 25 of my uh, sort of 80 infantry that I brought in this list. So he was actually able to do a pretty good number on my on my infantry and kill one of my Lehman Russes. But the problem was now that much of his army was exposed and now not only my long range firepower, but also the vast majority of my medium range firepower, like my Kazakin, my Sentinels and my infantry with their like double plasma were also going to be in range now. So swinging back round to turn two for the guard, I was able to push forward a little bit more with my infantry. I was hoping for a big turn. This really was going to be the turn that made or broke the game for me. Essentially, if I was able to make multiple knights sit down and give up this turn, then it would mean that I would be able to ride that momentum forward and win the game, hopefully. And... Well, fortunately for me, but maybe unfortunately for all specs, that is essentially what happened. I was able to get on to pretty much three out of the five objectives uh, without any issue. And then my guns opened up. And like I said, all my infantry, my Kazakin, uh, all of my tanks, and even despite the fact that I'd lost Gatekeeper, all my, my plasma sensors made up for it. Uh, the heavy bolters and everything made up for it. And once the dust had settled, uh, all specs actually only had, I believe it was a couple of baby knights left on the board. I was literally able to finish off the wounded one and kill the remaining two medium knights in, in a single turn. Uh, I think that... Uh, Auspex was kind of unlucky with his, his saves in this in the second turn. The executions really did feel quite powerful. Uh, and the Vanksha Cannon again did 12 wounds and just chopped just chopped a knight in half. So that was unfortunate. So that really that really did seal the game. Swinging back round to, to his turn two, he was able to pick up another couple of infantry squads with his remaining two uh, baby knights. And, uh, and But unfortunately, he failed uh, a couple of charges that he really needed to try and sort of you know, to, you know, get on some more objectives and make some things happen. Uh, although it was that like, he was in a pretty difficult situation at this point. He was facing about fifteen hundred points worth of guard with just a with just a couple of, of of baby knights. And so, obviously, turn three came around, and unfortunately, that is where the last two of the uh, of the gallant, noble, brave, beautiful knights, unfortunately, did fall. So it was actually a relatively uh, short game, uh, ending with the 
Knights being tabled inside of three turns, which is pretty brutal, considering that this list, like uh, we said at the beginning of the video, had gone undefeated until uh, until this game. So whilst that was the game, of course, Auspex and I had a good old natter and a chat about it. You know, we're both analytically minded and we like talking about the math ham and all that kind of good stuff. And we did have a little chat about the match and what we thought about the matchup in general. Now, Auspex did say that he thought that guard going into Knights in general is actually a really tricky matchup for the Knights. And I agreed with him. Um, even before we had the 9th edition codex, my guard tank armies regularly smashed knight armies on the tournament scene. In fact, I was tempted to bring a, a, a tank company to take on the, the knight company, but I thought that it would make the game a, a little bit too one-sided. As it turned out, uh, you know, guard in general, the new 9th edition guard especially, is actually very difficult for the uh, for the knights to deal with. One of my favourite things about this game was the fact that I think I actually managed to convince Auspex on the tactics and Merits of the Vanquish Cannon. I know that he's done a lot of videos on the different guard units and math hammering out which are the best turret options and stuff. And going into this game, he was much more afraid of my executioners than he was of my Vanquish. But after that Vanquish just hit and went straight through all his knights, I am uh, I am uh, happy to report that he did have a, a quite a, quite a bit of respect for the old Vanquish Cannon by the end of the game, which is which is great for me because obviously my favourite uh, Lehman Rust type is the Vanquisher. I think if we were to do this same mission again and I use my same list but Auspex was going to bring his Blood Angels it would be a very different game because I think the fact that he couldn't hide from any of my firepower turn one really meant that it was a very very difficult game for him. I think if he'd had his Blood Angels and he had been able to really take advantage of those big line of sight blocking things in his uh, in his deployment zone, then that would have meant that my opening turn one barrage wouldn't have been anywhere near as powerful. And it would have meant that realistically, I would have had maybe turn two, if I'm lucky, to try and deal with his um, try and deal with his sort of oncoming horde of sanguinary guard and death company and all that kind of stuff. So I definitely am hoping that I'll be able to get Auspex back in the battle bunker for another game and hopefully this time he'll be able to sort of uh, bring his blood angels. However, after seeing the guard in action and I know Auspex has a really cool guard army, I'm hoping that uh, next time we see each other at the tournament scene, he is actually going to be rocking you know, the Emperor's true finest the Ashen Militarum. Uh, if those of you who haven't seen Auspex's guard um, he actually has done a video on it. It was a few years ago, but it's still uh, still very, very cool. It's a really awesome, like, police force, like, state secret police kind of themed army. It's in a similar sort of white and orange colour scheme to his knights, uh, and it does look really, really cool. He's got rough riders with, like, riot shields and all kind of great things. So if you haven't seen that uh, video, just go onto YouTube now and type uh, Auspect Tactics Imperial Guard Army, and it'll probably come up with that video, and I highly recommend that you watch it, because it is a really cool army and theme that he's come up with uh, for his guard. But yeah, that's it for today's video. I just thought it'd be nice, cool, little fun one to talk about how uh, I got to play a game with a really, you know, great YouTuber and just a fantastic guy all around. For those of you that haven't heard of Auspect Tactics, well, where have you been living? You must have been under a rock. He's got one of the biggest 40k channels uh, on YouTube at the moment. Seriously, I will have a link down in the description though. If you haven't always subscribed to him, please go and do it. Uh, one of the big reasons that I've been able to grow quite so much over the last few months has been to the very generous support from uh, from Auspect Tactics. He's been giving me lots of shout outs and everything and he's been crediting me when he's been doing like his leak analysis videos and all that kind of good stuff. So I want to say of course a massive thank you to him for supporting the channel. A massive thank you for coming over and a massive thank you for just generally being a top bloke guys. And like I said if you haven't checked his channel out uh, you know if somehow you're one of the one or two Warhammer players in the world that hasn't uh, checked his videos out and subscribed to him make sure you go over there and check it out. He has all sorts of fantastic tactics and unit review videos and really he covers so many different factions that there's always something that you're going to find useful everything from marines to you know to chaos to guard to xenos all the tactics are all covered by him and he is a very very hard working guy uh he actually puts out like three or four videos a day they're all really high quality just very very impressive so if you haven't already subscribed to the channel make sure you go over there and do that now but that's it for today's video. If you haven't already, smash that like button. And if you want to make sure you never miss an episode, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. If you've really enjoyed today's video, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. It really does make a huge, huge difference. One of the big perks of becoming a channel member or Patreon is you gain access to the Mordian Glory Discord, where we have got over six 
hundred active community members. There's always somebody to talk to about anything from painting to tactics to memes to hobbying to just general 40k chat. So if that sounds like a whole load of fun and also sounds like if you're a newer player it might be a kind of a helpful resource to draw upon then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. And I'd just like to take a moment now to say a big thank you to all of the latest channel members and Patreon supporters. So a massive thank you to Ben Spears, Blade Little, Esprat, Paddy, Gida Knight, Ralph Risk, Josh Greenfield, Jeffrey Cole, Ozzy Mandricles, Electro Halo 8, Max Dealey, and the Wizard MF for becoming channel members. Thank you guys. For doing your part and a big thank you to the latest patreon supporters so thank you to david newby jessica simon olson max dart sean mark lee sim and knack thank you guys for your ongoing patreon support now last but certainly not least i'd like to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreon supporters the war masters these are the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to support the channel and i am very very grateful to them so a massive thank you to bon bon vert phil french ross miller tequal alex dengal john stubbs nick walsh swordfish trombone diesel fox tom sutton and of course August Varney. Thank you guys for your very generous support. It truly is a big part of how I'm able to do Morgan Glory full time. So I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching and of course as always I'll see you guys next time.